there's a bit of reality to catch up on, which will find its way into a drama at some point. Uh, that's following on from Bet. Uh, with, with Chris Norton on the Wild Show, went, went to bet a couple of weeks ago, and we've, we've posted quite a lot of, of clips and uh, news from there, but I think this, this bit of it is slightly, slightly complicated in its implications, but I think it's still major, major news, which was that Adobe was back. I can't remember exactly how long they'd been away. During the lockdown, perhaps they disappeared or just had a little seminar room in a corner somewhere but they were definitely back this year with the uh, express which is an online cloud-based ai uh, scheme for doing very quick so social media ready graphics and video bits of sound um, pdf files jpegs or to other graphics formats as well, I think. But the the thing is that it's it's definitely another world than um, what's in the Creative Cloud now. It's the only way to, to you have to subscribe to it. But you, it used to be Photoshop and Illustrator and what became InDesign or it used used to be Page Page Maker, I think, was one of theirs. Uh, anyway, the 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 thing is that. They've they've sort of gone away on the basis that that wasn't that whole thing wasn't worth promoting very much. I, I think that was what was in their minds. I don't I don't know exactly. Although it's still a major industry, um, they they weren't really pushing that for schools. Perhaps they assumed schools already knew about it. But now that's that's changed. This express thing, which. It, you can you can get into online. It's there's a there's a there's a lot of it that's freely available, so um, any anybody can try it out, and it will. You put in a few words and it'll come up with a graphic, for example, um, or you you can change the shape the the dimensions of a video to fit any any social media format. And it will do a, a quick one out of a longer one. All of those, all of those sorts of things. Um, so I think that was ma a major news event, and I, I, I don't know what what consequence that will have on on the way schools or other other education sites look at graphics. But it, it's definitely worth worth having a look at, and it would follow on from that. What uh, Jeff Jarvis has been talking about with the Gutenberg parenthesis. I've I've played a couple of times a talk you you can find on YouTube from an MIT seminar about the Gutenberg parenthesis as as storytelling, as um, medieval uh, studies, and I still I still think that's um, that's but. Pro just as interesting as the journalism approach, because I think Thomas Pettit has taken it a lot, a lot further. I think the journalists are still into um, professional journalism rather than citizen journalism, and therefore they do. They still think of uh, text as having authority. I think to a much larger extent. Um, Thomas Pettit does do journal articles, but they're they're in a particular style. Anyway, to have a, have a look, search search for, for search for what you can find on YouTube or anywhere. But the the thing is that um, Je Jeff Jarvis did in, through twittering did, did seem to be quite interested in in Bet and the radio R Russell Prue's Bet Radio, but we we. We didn't work our way through everything else that was going on at the time to get to what is happening with media and what the consequence of that is for journalism. But I, I know that um, Jeff Jarvis is going to be looking at. He's, he's retired now. He's not. He's not working at uh, a journalism play course. So he's 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 going to look at other sorts of humanities studies. I, I think I haven't quite understood that. But 
it, that would be very interesting because the, the other thing that's going on, I think, is that the, the MOOC, the online courses, are more or less stable now for vocational subjects, for internet skills. There's, there's quite a lot of large companies who are, are ready to accept the output. So they, they offer jobs to people and they contribute to the, the content of the courses. And that, that seems to be working. But um, there's still a question whether the MOOC is, is okay for humanities or social science. And I, I think that's complicated by the fact that those, those, those subject areas are in difficulty anyway. Well, as, as is journalism, the, there's evidence that those, those are the courses that seem to be being cancelled if, if a particular university gets into financial trouble. So all, all of that we'll come back to later on, and um, I'm going I'm going to try and try and find um, what Jeff Jarvis has been saying because I think we we can probably find a podcast or an interview somewhere um, that that is the sort of thing we should have uh, or could have uh, fitted into radio or sound at the at the time of bet. It's go, it's going to go on. Uh, on a loop. There's the Learning Technologies show, also at Excel, coming up in April. And if you if you just look for Russell Prue on, on Twitter or YouTube or uh, I don't think it's called Bet Radio anymore, but there's there's um, there's a primary school with with some interesting ideas on, on internet safety uh, which you, you can you can find. Anyway, uh, going back to an actual play, this is uh, I'm, go- I'm on I'm, I'm still on sort of repeat mode, uh, but I I I find I find them well worth listening to again. The stories of J. G. Bellard. This is this is from um, the Internet Archive. Definitely Creative Commons. News News from the Sun. Mm-hmm. 